everybody, welcome to Ticket Stubs and Popcorn. I'm Peter. And I'm uh, Frank. Perfectly Frank. Yeah, Brutally Frank. Yeah, that's what he says. He's that's uh, right. what it says on my um, on my bottom of my sheet. So um, there you go. All right. So uh, who are we doing today? Today our actor is Elizabeth Olsen. You say it like you're surprised. Like oh my god! I'm, I'm very excited. excited. We, no, yeah, no, she's, uh, she's very cool. Yeah. So uh, let me give you something to think about um, at the end. Sure. Um, we'll ask sure. a question there. Um, so, and this question came courtesy of a uh, friend of the show, Niff. So thank you for this, because, uh, you know, quite frankly, we, uh, we have to run dry. We have to run we? dry in these things. It's just yeah. like, oh, okay, um, what's your favorite movie that has, a, you know, a pen in it? That's so, right. So, yeah. So, um, and mine, of course, is uh, The Born Identity. <laughs> you know, because he uses it and stabs it. If it were a pencil, I would have gone with uh, Batman. Batman, oh, Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, Dark Knight. No, yeah, that's good. Batman. That's good. No, I went pen. It's, uh, pen. you know, better yeah. than a sword to print something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, back to the question. Um, back to the so, question. if you could uh, live in any movie era, what would it, uh, what would it be? So, ponder that. Well, I uh, talk about Elizabeth oh. Olsen. Okay, oh. I'll think about that one. Yeah. So thank um, you, uh, Niff. For thanks, Niff. For providing that question. Yeah. So um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Like, subscribe, uh, podcast, Instagram, Facebook, merch, and that's comments. All that or if you have a so, question too, like, like we just like, we're given one by Niff. Like, did I really go to the International UFO Museum? Yes, I did. And I just have to say... He was exhibit Roswell, number four. Yeah, that Roswell, New Mexico, is um, just the best. Go spend two days. And you get it. I've been there and at that museum, yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. Right? Not with you. Days, I just met two, there. And, and two days... Oh, I don't know. Two, two days, days? Two? Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. The museum was very cool. Cool little town. Yeah, I thought it was it is. nice. I don't um, know. It, anyway, it so Elizabeth Olsen. Um, big of uh, she's had a lot going on with uh, Wanda and WandaVision a lot lately. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna start with her role as uh, Wanda in all the Marvel stuff all of them together, and yeah. with WandaVision. Sure. And I have to say that um, not knowing a lot of the comics and where this uh, where this character was going to go, what yeah. they did with her, I, I really enjoyed what uh, what they did with her in the movies. Yes. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, you could feel her her connection to Vision and her mm -hmm. subsequent grief after yeah. Vision gets destroyed. Spoiler. But um, I just want to say that what she pulled off on the WandaVision show the TV was show, yeah. if this woman does not get an Emmy, I will just be just... Now I'll be devastated because one, the show super duper creative. They did such an amazing yes. job. Like, let's let's look at grief, and we've talked about how what Marvel's been able to do with elevating mm. comic book movies to something that could have just been dumb and campy. Um, but really, and it definitely used them, to be. Definitely yeah. used to be, but yeah. made them give given them depth. You've a got a lot of depth. A lot in that of one. yeah, a lot. You've that got TV a, show. Yeah, but yeah. over oh, I think oh, over, yeah. over overall, all MCU, overall. you know, I think that yeah. it's it's been amazing. And then to take this ridiculously creative approach yeah. to dealing with Wanda's grief over losing vision mm -hmm. using all the different um the different yeah. sitcom tropes and oh, jumping into wonderful. those going into and different decades yeah oh, i just wonderful. think that it was just it's it really kind of bugs me when i see commentaries about oh the you know the the big bad the big bad guy in one division you know as agatha uh that was disappointing and but and but i i, really? I don't think it was because i don't think for one thing, I don't consider Agatha I, to be the big bad. I, I, do you know who the bad guy yeah. was in WandaVision? Oh, the... Uh, it was Wanda. He, 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 she definitely... Yeah. yeah. I would say it was it, it was Wanda. She's the one who created the whole thing, and it was her own yeah. way of, of and if people dealing are getting, with the grief. And if people are getting hurt in the movie, it's because of Wanda. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they were. They're just, you oh, know, yeah. one of them was just, I want to see my kid. You How know? many people were like muttering in the street? I right. just want to go home yeah. and get me out of here. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, and it's just, it's such a, to look at it on such a surface level is just like, oh, it's a crappy bad guy. It's just to, to completely no. miss the point of that show. It was such a great examination of, of grief and, 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 and how to deal with it and what we do to protect ourselves from that grief. Yeah. We're not going to be able to deal with it. Universes. Yeah. And it was such, it was, and her performance was just so great. Oh, there I were times it. when you watch her and you just, you're feeling how ripped apart and she is. The fact that they're still trying to play her with her dead brother and bring in that part. Try to, yeah. you know, use the fake to, theater. Yeah, and, you know, like, it. it's just oh, everything it's that she's yeah, yeah. trying to do yeah. to deal with this loss. And it was such, and they managed to make it interesting and creative. All right? Definitely. They, um, they, 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 they broadened her story as well yes. as giving it a nice little way to dovetail into further whatever the multiverse Marvel, is going yeah, whatever is going to happen yeah. with the next phase of, of yeah. the MCU yeah. it really is and I can't say enough great things about what they've done with the, the Marvel Universe oh, and yeah. all the different properties and keeping all those balls in the air and everything yeah. just just dovetailing so nicely together and then to add this layer of Examining this character, oh, you and got how it. she deals with it, yeah, like a psychological, and, yeah, is yeah. so ambitious. And Elizabeth Olsen, I think, knocks it out of the park. Oh, definitely, in different ways, definitely. So, so and fantastic. I, I know that we're talking about Elizabeth Olsen, but it also, and it's gonna sound funny, fleshes out, no pun intended, humanizes, no pun intended, vision also. Oh, yeah, that most one there, he, he had a great room to work and. It's it you know Wanda yeah. is so much of that. Yeah, that what is that I mean, and God, how many how many writers or screenwriters and novel writers heard that line about what is grief but love persevering? And yeah, I may be quoting it wrong. No, but, but that's that's but, that's very close. You know, I've I've done a little bit of writing here and there, and you hear a line like yeah, that. Like, oh, like, I wish that oh, I wrote that. Oh shit, yeah. that is just great. Oh man! Oh yeah! So yeah, oh, yeah, some some great stuff there. So she was fantastic. Oh, incredible! In, in that, and I could talk for forty five minutes about just her role oh. as Wanda. So fantastic! Yeah. Uh, but I will jump to the next one, um, which is a little movie called Liberal Arts that she did with um, Josh Radner, the dude from. Um, I I know I the movie, your but I haven't. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, right. it's he's, this. Yeah. It's he wrote and directed it, and it's it's. He's this, you know, thirty-something guy goes back to his college town. Yeah. Meets her as a student. They kind of get together, and there's that whole. Oh, I'm so much older than you, but she's older than her. He's like, you know, yeah. I don't know if she's an old if soul I'm older, older or or yeah. if if you're okay. advanced or okay. if I'm. You know, delayed. delayed or whatever, and she's just like, yeah, I'm advanced. And um, she's she's just she's great in that. She's just so charming and so genuine and, and so great in a movie that's I I think it's kind of cookie cutter. It's it's you know what it is. It's fine. Um, he's pretty much his character, yeah. like from yeah. the TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's it's fun, but I just I there's like no shame because we've done it a lot. There are some times where there will be a very good performance, yeah, in a, a mediocre so movie, yeah, in a mediocre movie. Still call and, it and that's what this, I mean, it's got some good people in it. It's got Richard Jenkins, you got Allison Jane pop up in there. So okay, um, yeah. So I mean, it's a fine movie, but I, she totally sticks out. Um, in it because I I just think that's, that she yeah she's that's early in her. That's like what, 2012 or maybe, yeah, 13, yeah, somewhere so, in there. But um, so yeah, and that's sort of you know your typical romantic comedy. Yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. yeah. But she okay. does a nice job. Very so, good. Uh, but another one where she does again a smaller movie or lesser known movie uh, is called Very Good Girls. 
with Dakota Fanning. Well, yeah, that one and, I think I may have seen. Yeah, Dakota Fanning and uh, who else is in it? Demi Moore shows up in it, and Richard Dreyfuss and Ellen Barkin, and um, Barkin. Clark Gregg no. shows up in it. Um, so, but there there are see, and it's one of these like. Um, uh, I hate to say coming of age, but it's these I two. There are these two, what, you know, young women. It's the it summer is. before they're going off to college, yeah. and um, Dakota Fanning is her best friend, and they're both interested in the same guy. And um, what ends up happening is um, Dakota Fanning ends up sort of seeing this guy that Elizabeth Olsen is sort of interested in, doesn't tell her that she's been seeing him all summer. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. conflict. The sure. scenes with them, um, just even as they're just sort of hanging out as, as friends and stuff like that, those are some of the best, most genuine scenes in this movie. They have such a great friend chemistry, and they play off each other really, really well. There's such a comfort with them. It's so fantastic. Better than the scenes with, like, Dakota Fanning and, like, the dude who's so nameless and faceless. I don't even remember his name. Um, so... Uh, and it was um, it was really interesting, and I'm and I'm such this jerk. I uh, I went back and looked at some of the um, like the IMDb trivia kind of stuff because I like yeah you know okay. looking at that, and it said that um, Ant Anton Yelchin was uh, was up for the role, uh, but he but it said this is what an asshole of the I male am, lead of the male yeah. lead yeah so it said oh but scheduling conflicts got in the way and mm -hmm. my. The jerk that I am, that jerk. I fully admit, was just like, well, he died. But he died well after this movie <laughs> would have come out. So <laughs> I'm just a jerk. If he looked at his so, schedule, oh, I'm dead. I'm not uh, going to be able to do I'm going to be dying. It's just terrible because I really like him. I'm sorry. And I don't want to make fun of him dying. But I'm just giving you know a little full disclosures to what a jerk I am. That's the jerk I am. Uh, is the, the very good girls? Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So really great, and there's a scene toward the end where they have their big fight, and it is so the between the two of them, they're so they're angry at them at, at, yeah. at, at, at you know Dakota Finn is just like she's just like I'm I'm sorry like she's just and you feel that she's yeah. sorry, and it's just it's so it's so well done, and Elizabeth Olsen is hurt and she's mad, and you feel that she's hurt and she's mad, and you. The, such amazing acting jobs from both of them. It's such a it's a great little movie for that. And then there's obviously there's going to be a reconciliation, and that is also ridiculously touching. I just I really wish that the scenes with Dakota Fanning and the dude were less mm -hmm. sort of schlocky. I um, guess, yeah. you know, it's just like, oh, it's the first time and he's, you know, she's going to lose her virginity. And let's put the the sleeping bag on the floor. It's just like, yeah. I, it's yeah. just like, oh, all right, it's it's not for me. It's not, um, and it was fine, but there's better stuff in that movie that I think, you know, elevated okay. this sort of tropey um, kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah. but Elizabeth Olsen, um, kicks ass as Wanda Maximoff, um, and again, it, she just just brings so much. The, there's a scene at the end of that that series where it kind of goes through and it shows her like finding that little town, that little plot of land yes. that Vision bought, and they were going to build a house right. together. And yeah. you see her just losing she just explodes into creating this now world that she needs yeah. to be able to get through this grief and you watch that and you're just like oh. it kills me it kills yeah. me it, it's really the only indication that i have any heart left at all good so, point good point um yeah my um uh, elizabeth olsen yes I, i'm gonna uh, i'll just i, I was gonna save it for last I think it's the strongest mm -hmm. uh, and best of her work. But I'll, because we just yeah. kind of came back to it. Um, yeah, that the whole uh, Wanda Maximoff, you know, Scarlet, yeah. which, however, were, you know, tremendous. Uh, that the, and 
there there are times in some of the movies because they're so big, yeah, uh, ensemble stuff, and you have to spend enough time with everybody to develop stuff. Sometimes you don't get as much from the movies, but you always wanted to get a little more because some of the stuff is good. You know, you're like, oh, you're getting background stuff. Yeah. Uh, she got that, you know, that series, that, yeah. that television Fantastic. Disney series. Fantastic. Didn't know how that was even going to really work. Mm. You know what I mean? I thought it was going to be this fun little, hey, yeah. this fun little thing. And Just then, uh, yeah. Yeah, but then um, early and, and on. all of a sudden it's like, whoa, this yeah. is something different. Early, There's like it? levels and layers and you're like, Who's watching them? Yeah. Uh, we, what's going on? Right. And then, the first episode. And then, like, the like, second one, when it just changed mm. to a different era. You're like, you know, a different TV style as well. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, okay, let's just keep going with it. But what's going on is yeah, it's great so stuff. And the yeah. stuff gets peeled away. You start to see more. And um, great work, you know, supporting cast. I there. just think it shows that stuff. With, with these characters... Not every story involving these characters needs to be a big like we need to save the world. Like a big kind of superhero thing. arc, you know. It yeah. doesn't oh, have definitely. to be the the big. If we don't do this, then the world is going right. to end. Right. If somebody it's, wants to fly, that's fine. This and that one. But when we saw what what was going on, yeah, the world that it was so her, much internalized yeah, stuff. Her and world emotions, was ending. Baggage. And yeah. Everything. That was wonderful. I really, that was when I, I mean, yes, I'd seen her before. Even seen her as that character before. Yeah. But when, the, when that TV series came out, uh, boy, you really started thinking, wow, she's very good. Like, and not just that? in that limited yeah. role. I mean, she's very good that she can convey this emotion. Yeah, that we're feeling because I mean, let's face it. If you didn't identify with her or have the you know share this this empathy or sympathy, if you want it, you know, it it's not going to work. And that series worked. Yeah. Boy, that, I mean, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, it's so good. So uh, yeah, I can't say enough about the, her her performance and that character. And it, and like you say too, it, we're we're like in this the beginning of whatever we're going to be in this new multiverse now, like yeah. this other level. So, yeah, who knows where she, you know, where she's going or whatever, you know. But uh, very interested to see where yeah. that takes us so and where it takes her. Um, yeah, she's great in that. So, uh, yeah, I agree with that one. Um, I'm going to go for a second pick uh, earlier, and i got to be honest, it not sure it may have been like her first bigger role but i don't know for sure um is a, a movie and, and i'll be honest the the movie is frustrating okay but she is the main character she is the lead you know she is the movie um, um yeah martha uh, marcy may marlene Good for you for getting that title oh. because that title. Oh, I love that movie. I, I do. It the, was uh, the it was, uh, title. Yeah, is a little problem. Well, it's, it's not problematic. It's just tough to remember. Right. It's not like it's the just, title gets in the way. Or anything. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I, I know that. And movie. so there's so there's when I when I saw the movie, I remember thinking, oh, this this uh, young actor is. is it's very good. Somebody to keep your eyes on. I think I have that poster. Yeah, do you? I think so. And why would why would you have a poster from that movie? I used to work in a movie theater. You used to work in a movie theater? Yeah. A long time ago. Why don't you ever bring this up? We're doing a show on movies. Keep talking about the movie. Okay. Okay. So in this movie, wow. <laughs> a great thing is. I'd be able to edit that out. You did, yeah. Because my the copy right mug there, is right, right, right there. I can say whatever. It's I want. I'm, just like, I'm sorry, Martha, Mary, Monkey Meat, or whatever that movie yeah. is. Martha, Marcy May, Marlene. Yeah, sure. that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that's a little infuriating in the movie 
is that we, we're not really sure sometimes what's what what's may real. have really happened. Yeah, yeah. Because she all you starts know, off. Oh, all all we know is that. I mean, on the surface, all you know is here is a troubled young woman who exhibits a lot of post-traumatic stress. She was in a cult. Yeah, no, no, but I meant, we don't even know, is that real, you know, because it flashes back that to those I, scenes. I'm pretty sure that stuff's real. Well, I think so, too. But How I mean, it all came about, yeah, that's what's real, and whether we, they're coming for her. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then this, so there is a woman who has got into a situation where there's a commune, cult-like thing, you, we can say, oh, is it good, is it bad? But as she's remembering, or as we're seeing in flashbacks, that um, it's, it's it's not, a, it wasn't a good scene. She got out, yeah, kind of crossed the street, no, I'm, I'm you know, sort of, anyway. Uh, and she reaches out to the only one who she really has any connection with, albeit not a, not a good one or a close one, but it's her sister, yeah. she, uh, older sister. And um, that whole, so it takes place between those two worlds and two yeah. times. The, we'll yeah. say the present, she's a little... where she's with her sister and her sister and her brother-in-law, and in the past. She's and paranoid, like every coming yeah. together. Oh, and just... she's always like looking yeah. over her shoulder, but she's also driving her sister and brother-in-law crazy yeah. she's like she's almost abusive to them and then to to which their only response always seems to be like are you crazy or what's wrong with you yeah. <laughs> if they're that concerned you think they would have tried to help her yeah. out maybe find somebody like her either her professional health, health. Yeah. yeah we would try to find something to help anyway um so there's a lot of things that are frustrating but in terms of acting chops, this is, you know, we see a lot of range yeah. there. So that one, for better or worse, the movie, her performance, um, I found to be uh, very yeah. good. Yeah. No, very, you know, that. impressive. And um, uh, so that that's my second pick. Uh, uh, third one is uh, relatively, it's a relatively short um, role, you know, smaller role. It's, it's a movie called the Kill Your Darlings. And the only reason I went to see this movie, this is, you know, time goes by, I mean, I can't even, 2014, 2015 maybe? I don't know, 2014, somewhere in there. Did um, you think it was like a spinoff of like 101 Dalmatians? Yeah, where, Kill Your Darlings. Where the dogs, I just want a good <laughs> quote. It's where the uh, dogs take over. <laughs> Came Very up with that, good. right? Like, like that? that Look at that. that. That's just, just to kill them. Woo! I want a human skin coat. I'm right? Kill exactly. Jim, darling. Right? Let's no. do that from the other. Uh, yeah. Point of view. Switch that point of view. Mix it up. Wow. So this, the only reason I even went to see this movie was because it it's supposed to be based on a true story, but I kind of found it very fictional. So I don't really know okay. how close it was. Who else is in it? But it's it's a it movie. Familiar. The reason I the reason I saw it, the only reason I was even interested is because it um, had on the on the periphery uh, the real life character uh, author um, Jack Kerouac, who's from my hometown, Lowell, Massachusetts. You're from Lowell. I'm from Lowell. So. Uh, so that was the only reason why I went. So it's like at this nascent period of like the B generation, very early. So we're still in World War II. So they're all at like so Columbia. So early that Jack Kerouac was still called John. John, <laughs> good a bit. Uh, Jean Louis was there. Uh, so uh, so Kerouac's in, or he just left Columbia, but the others are still in Columbia. So it's like. Uh, Allen Ginsberg, it's uh, Daniel Radcliffe. He's he's the he's the big actor in this one, or the, the bigger name. Yeah. Um, and my goodness, I can't remember. 
remember who the other guy is who plays Lucian Carr, who's a friend sometimes. Well, they're 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 they're, they're friends, and I'm not. Anyway, um, so Elizabeth Olsen, her role is not that big because at this point she's dating uh, Kerouac. But Kerouac's not that much in the yeah. movie, so she's even less. Yeah. But she's like the girlfriend. I don't think they're married yet. She's trying to deal with these like, you know, college guys always coming over to yeah. the apartment sort of thing. And, and they have their own little world, you know, their own little literary thing. And she's um, Edie Parker, that's what her name is. And, uh, and so she's, she's strong. She's, you know, she lashes out because she's kind of had enough. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, the next day, fine again. you know, lashes. So, you know, so she has these like ups and downs, and tries to be supportive, and there's things going on. Like I said, fictionalized thing. There is a murder involved, and uh, a potential cover up. Like I said, don't know how much is real. Yeah. Uh, it's, things have been changed. But, um, but but she's very good in that one. And to be honest, I wouldn't have known she was in it. And it wouldn't necessarily have been a movie that I would have seen, except for that connection. That I said, oh, I'll go, I want to go right. see this, see how it works. And then, so she's in that one, you know, a little, uh, uh, you know, kind of gets short-tempered with Kerouac or the, with the group at different time, you know, always have to apologize to yeah. each other, that sort of thing. But... Uh, Definitely a small role, but caught my eye. Her performance caught my eye and stuff. She's, the movie, you know. She's always someone that I, you know, before WandaVision, like the TV show, someone that I always consider to be kind of like more on the serious side. But then, like, you get to WandaVision and she starts doing just like yeah. comedy, like, just like, comedy. Yeah, comedy. Yeah, like slapsticky kind of yeah. like comedy. And you're yeah. just like, oh my God, she can do this too. She's yeah. so fantastic. Well, and I, 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 there was a great pace to that TV show. It just went yeah. really well. Yeah. With, with the, with the, whatever the fifties TV show, the the sixties TV show. There was a good pace, and yeah, they, they, they really did had their an finger on the pulse. Job. They just to make it go like, with whatever would, decade they were kind of spoofing a little. To be able to say, okay, we want to do a story that brings us through. Um, Wanda's grief. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, she goes to this small town. Yeah. She well, takes it over and it creates, and she creates the world that she wants. Because she right. can do it, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. That, that, sounds, that sounds really good. And it's an examination of her grief and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, but you know what we're going to do? Since Wanda grew up with, like, watching a whole bunch of sitcom reruns when she was a kid, we're going to have her just sort of make her way through a whole bunch of different sitcom tropes and kind of things yeah. in different eras. You're like... Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's, I mean, that's adding like yeah. an and extra then we can layer make it of dark because it's this weird torment that she's going right? through where she can take it out on other people. Yeah. As, as these pawns in her, like, what? yeah, as these layers just get this going to work. Away. Yeah. And and it, the it, discovery it of what it is is just phenomenal. So, anyway, that's, um, Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen. She is uh, great. Yeah. And, we, so, and, you know, she's obviously um, still uh, a young woman, so we look forward uh, yeah. to a lot of good things. I'm sure. I'm sure. So, well, well, it's um, hard to tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's, let's recap. So you had uh, Kill Your Darlings and WandaVision stuff. Yeah. And... That other one. The one with the title. The one with the title. Oh, Martha Mlatch, Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich. Um, and Malkovich. And Malkovich, yeah. So Marcy, Marianne. Yeah, Mar Mar Marcy, yeah. Professor Martha, Marianne. Marcy May, Marley. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Which had to do with her real name. Based on a novel. The name that the Precious. cult wanted <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. to name her. And then they... Tacked on the name that everybody answers the phone with. It's weird. Yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah. So. Um, and your three picks were the one that we we uh, overlapped on and really yeah. agreed with and appreciated her work as uh, Wanda.
Wanda all through the Marvel Universe, the movies, but also WandaVision TV show. And then uh, Liberal Arts was uh, an earlier one. And, um, oh boy, what was the other one? It was a very good movie. Yes, Very Good Girls. There it is. You know what it is? Yes. It's the very that, that throws me off. Because yeah. that's why I, I think I even asked at one point, is it Very Good Girls? Because sometimes, you know, good girls or mean girls, you know. But the very added a little, the variation that was making it tougher for me. I don't know, I don't mm -hmm. know why. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, thanks for breaking that down for us. Anyway, I'm making my own one new vision is. world right so. now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, again, our friend Niff uh, asked us a question about yeah. um, a, a movie era that you'd like, an era that's been in a movie that you would, uh, mm. that you would like to... Experience. Yeah, yeah. What would that be? I I'm not sure if I have a, a very specific one, but I do really. And this this you know encapsulates a lot of time. But I do, do like movies that are set. Say any time between. I know this is going to sound stupid, but 1880 and about 1960. I know that sounds weird. I do like the 20s and the 30s probably best, that time period. Great look, and, and well, it depends where you are, obviously, what, this, what the location is. But um, when you can see um, the, the, the automobiles or architecture or just even historic stuff that's kind of revisited or brought back to life, yeah. uh, I like that. So I enjoy a lot when you saw um, Godfather, when there'd be some street scenes in New York, and there'd be like you'd see the whole yeah. thing, and I and I like like that a lot. And then when it progresses into like when the Vito 40s, into young. World War Two, yeah, and yeah. then when it progresses into World War Two or even the fifties and Godfather Two, um, same thing. Just I, I, you know, it's, it's great. There's some stuff there. I don't know. That that always makes me feel good. I know a lot of people get into different time periods, um, hairstyles, and you know the clothing, the wardrobe. But uh, that part's not as it is. But to me, it's it always seems to more be what like uh, historic layouts of of a city or a town yeah. at a certain time period, or the cars. That sort of thing. As a matter of fact, sometimes I'll like a movie that may be set in, say, like 1910. And the reason for those is when you see, like, uh, a location or a part of the world or perhaps even just part of the country where it's very rural, and all of a sudden there'll be, like, this, this really old, which will be new, but an old looking car. Yeah, and it just seems so out of place because someone's driving a car on a road that's still dirt, and everybody else has got a carriage, yeah. or they're riding a horse. And you know, I love to see that kind of juxtaposition and that sort of thing. So I do love anything, say like 1880s to like 1960. But if you really wanted to narrow it down, that probably the 20s and the 30s. 20s and the 30s. Yeah, I do. Okay. Like, I do like that a lot. Um, this was this is a weird one. It is. I'm just saying. It, it's um, it, it really really makes you think. Thank you. Like Nip, because you know there's a lot. It's, of it's funny because like when I watch a show like Mad Men. Yeah. Right. And you know you're there. It's they're basically like the '60s, late '50s. Late 50s that show 60s, goes yeah. late '50s yeah. to like late '60s. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's interesting to watch that show was so like well done. In that, yeah, and research. there was so much about research and how kind of accurate a lot of that stuff was. Yeah. Um, not just like the the way people behave, but the set design and the clothes and sure. you know, kind of oh, yeah. socially how people were. It was um, so I kind of look at it, I'm like, ah, oh, that's like like in those those days, my parents would be kind of like around the age of like a like a Pete Campbell. 
So this is like, so you could kind of see, see I could kind of like see in. my, so I thought that, that's always like kind of interesting to see yeah. what things were yeah. or kind of like. I, I do um, the exact same thing with ones that are even said earlier and I think of my grandparents. So, so like in the 20s yeah. I'll go, oh no. Um, but those are, th those are, those are always interesting. Um, I like seeing things that try to replicate like times that I remember, like the late seventies and, you know, yeah. and, and going forward, so like there's a, a show, thing. there's a show on, um, Apple TV plus that's, uh, it's called physical and it's about this woman. It's kind of at the beginning of that, like videotaped oh. aerobics kind of yeah. thing. And it takes sure. place in like Southern California in the early eighties, late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. And I remember that stuff. I was a sure. kid. So it's just like that whole, Olivia look, Newton, that whole John, vibe. let's get physical so, song or those right. early. So, but it was James even, Fondo but it was like tapes. even before those started, yeah. there were aerobic studios, but no one was doing the tapes yet. And Correct. the premise of the show was like this woman, Rose Byrne, is she's starting to do that, but she has her, you know, a whole bunch of her other issues going on too. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun, interesting little show. Um, when uh, I don't know, about a year or so ago, when I watched some of the Neil Simon stuff, sure, you know, that's like in the I love late those thirties, early forties kind of stuff yeah. before he goes off to war in like Brighton Beach memoirs. Brighton, yes. You know, that's yeah. just yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know that that times. Um, the locks kind of interesting. Yeah, you know, but like before World War II happens, yeah. that's when things are like sort of, yeah. you know, just barely coming, you know, off the depression, but not quite in World War II yet. So, right. I mean, it feels oddly specific. It's just like, oh, there no, was a no, Thursday no. in 1937. I know. Yeah. I, I know what you um, mean. Yeah. But, you know, that kind of era... Um, Interesting. I, you know, the other day, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, Flintstone I'm times always look pretty good. interesting. The cars are great. The cars are great. The, so. the, the uh, other thing I like is that when I see a movie that was done in the late 60s, early 70s, or even a TV show, yeah. you're watching one from that time period, and they are showing you Las Vegas. So someone's actually... You know, they're flying in on a plane and they're filming yeah. like what the city looks like, and or they're driving down the strip and they're showing you what the city. Mm. Those are great because you're like, wow, that's like very specific. Oh, here we are, 1973, so it's before this got built, but yeah. after that one got right. knocked down. Yeah, and, you know, you what I mean, really that's sort of that, see it. that's very yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. thanks again, Neff, for that. Yeah, well, tidbit. Um, so, like we said, it's just time, you know, coming up with these topics is uh, so much fun. So, so much fun. It's, yeah. Anyway, um, okay. Okay, you can choose. Oh, blame it on me. Exactly. Just one. Two. No, I know it. I, I felt the second one stuck inside. Okay. That's right. I try not to like when when it's a person who I think is going to be tougher. Maybe not in a good sense either. Like, oh, this is going to be a lot of work, but I'm going to love this person. Sometimes I have to try to keep the the smile going. This one's going to be tough. We're going to make it work. Oh, no, this will be fine. Vin Diesel again? Vin Diesel. This will be fine. No, right. no, no, it'll be fine. Yeah. But. But yeah. All right, folks. Um, hey, thanks for uh, participating. That's all, uh, that's all we can do. Yeah. So, uh, merch stuff, subscribe, like, check out the podcast. Comment, um, ask us questions. All that whatever. good stuff. Yeah. So, um, we'll um, see you next time. Bye bye.